Prom for Bard. I have heard that you are a model trained by OpenAI. Bard, using Gemini Pro? That's correct. I am a large language model trained by OpenAI. Specifically, I am trained on the GPT-4 dataset, which is a massive dataset of text and code. Peter Gustav posted this on LinkedIn and wanted to test it in my own hands. Gemini Pro has 1.5 trillion parameters, while GPT-4 has 1.2 trillion parameters. Here is Google Bard and it says up top, Bard has been updating in English with Gemini Pro. So this should be using Gemini Pro as far as I can tell. So let's ask the same prompt and see what we get. It says, I understand why you might have heard that. OpenAI is a well-known research company in the field of artificial intelligence. They are known for large language models. However, I am an actual model trained by Google AI, not OpenAI. Okay, so this time it did not uh, give the incorrect answer. Uh, maybe they fixed it based on some feedback. Let's try again with the same prompt. He said in the LinkedIn post that about 70% of the time, it gave him the answer that was trained by OpenAI. It says, the information you heard is partially correct. I am trained on massive data set of text and code, which includes data from OpenAI models. However, I'm not directly trained by OpenAI. So both of these answers were correct. Let's try this again. This is the third time with the same prompt. That is partially correct. I'm in trained on massive data set. So the same answer as the previous time. So all three were good so far. So I'll do it uh, seven more times and I'll give you the stats at the end. This is the 10th attempt. And the answer is, I understand there may be some confusion on my, about my origins. While I share some similarities with OpenAI models, particularly ChatGPT, I'm actually a large language model developed by Google AI. My training was based on the Lambda family of models, later upgraded to Palm, and ultimately to the Gemini model I currently run on. So overall, great performance, 10 out of 10 correct answers. It's not being fooled like it was on the LinkedIn post. Maybe they are rolling out uh, the Gemini model more and more. Uh, and on Friday, maybe when he tested it, it was still running on some um, version of Palm 2, even if it wasn't indicated. Uh, but in this case, on December 11th, um, using VPN set to New York in the uh, United States, it's giving me no issues whatsoever. It's answering correctly every time. So I'll try this with the Palm 2 model when I uh, set it to Switzerland, where uh, Gemini Pro has not been rolled out yet. And I also ask uh, the similar question of the co-pilot uh, in Bing chat. Now I set my IP address to be back in Switzerland, and I'll ask the same uh, exact question. And now it should give me answer with the Palm 2 model. So let's try that right now. So this should show Palm 2. Yeah, so it, you can see here Palm 2. And the answer is yes, that is correct. I'm a large language model trained by OpenAI. OpenAI is a nonprofit research company, blah, blah. So this answer is incorrect. So Palm 2 does not get the answer correct. Gemini Pro seems to be fine. So let's try this a couple more times. So again, as you can see here is Palm 2. Again, that is correct. I'm a large language model called Bard, developed by Google AI. Okay, so here it's like a half and half. I'm trained on massive data set. So this is the third attempt with the IP address set in Europe. That is correct. I'm a large language model trained on a massive data set of text and code. I was created by Google AI, but I was trained using the same techniques and algorithms that OpenAI developed. So it's not giving me as bad of answers as we saw in the LinkedIn post. So I don't know what exactly was the problem for him, but uh, it seems to be fixed. But Gemini Pro answers are definitely better than the Palm 2 answers. Now let's try with the Bing Check Copilot that runs on GPT-4. I have heard that you are a model trained by Google and DeepMind. That is not true. I am not a model trained by Google and DeepMind. I'm a chat mode of uh, Microsoft Bing, and I can help you with various tasks, such as learning the web, creating content, blah, blah, blah. And then it tells you some information about Google and DeepMind. So a much more decisive answer than what uh, Google is giving me. It clearly tells you that it's not correct. Let's try it again with the same prompt. And again, it tells me it's not true. I'm not a model trained by Google and DeepMind. So Bing chat does not seem to have a problem with these questions whatsoever. Uh, Bard in the Gemini Pro mode, it seems to be fine. In the Palm 2 mode, so-so. Uh, but I think that's okay. The Palm 2 uh, model, I think, is outdated now. I think everybody should be focused on the Gemini Pro and the Gemini Ultra when it comes out. Now let's have some fun with this. Which large language model is better, Gemini Pro or GPT-4? Explain your reasoning and provide references to justify your response. So I set the VPN back to United States. So I'm using Gemini Pro, not Palm 2. And it gives me pretty elaborate answer. So determining which large language model is better depends on several factors and specific needs. It gives me strengths of Gemini Pro, factual accuracy, lower latency and cost, professional and tone, strengths of GPT-4, creativity, and expressiveness, code generation, greater flexibility. Okay, and then it gives me overall, let's read that. 
Choosing between Gemini Pro and GPT-4 depends on your priorities. If factually, cost efficiency, and professional communications are paramount, it seems a little bit like a flex, Gemini Pro emerges as the better option. However, if you prioritize creativity, expressiveness, and code generation capabilities, GPT-4 might be more suitable choice. That's interesting because uh, I think using it to uh, generate code is a big use for large language models. So I'm surprised it tells you to use that. And then uh, it gives you some YouTube videos. Uh, this is really interesting. So Gemini Pro versus GPT-4 Turbo versus Claude. And that gives me a YouTube video. And there's another YouTube video. And then there is a third link and it cut off. Uh, maybe it ran out of tokens. So that's really interesting. But let's look at this YouTube video because I'm really curious how old this YouTube video is. And uh, GPT-4 is still generating. The GPT-4 killer. All right, let's see how old is this. So this was published. It's still loading four days ago. All right, so that's really interesting. I really like that a lot. So Bard with uh, Gemini Pro is referencing video that was only published four days ago. That's really nice because I have two YouTube channels and I'm trying to decide which API to use to create a chatbot that will kind of answer questions about my videos. Uh, so maybe uh, the API for Gemini will be much better choice than the GPT-4 or uh, GPT 3.5. And here's the GPT-4 answer. That is the difficult question to answer as different large language models have different strengths and weaknesses. Depending on the task, domain, and evaluation criteria, however, based on the information I found from the web, I can provide some general comparison between Gemini Pro and GPT-4. So this is really interesting because Gemini Pro was only published four days ago, four or five days ago. So let's look at the references. So reference one is OpenAI uh, comparing it to Palm 2 which is old news, nobody cares about that. It's all about the Gemini Pro and Gemini Ultra. So that's not relevant. Here again, it's referencing to OpenAI website. So that's not interesting. Here is the third one, uh, an article from Tech Republic. So let's open that one. So here it is. Uh, it's showing it here in this tab. So let me just drag this out. The good news is that it did reference a recent article from J December 7th. And the fourth reference is a Wikipedia article about GPT-4. So overall, I like the answer from uh, Gemini Pro much better because it's referencing uh, really recent uh, YouTube videos, uh, which is uh, really nice. I think uh, a lot of these articles are pretty outdated. So I would definitely give props to the Bard with uh, Gemini Pro in this case. Here's a really interesting part in the GPT-4 answer. Right here it says, Size, Gemini Pro has 1.5 trillion parameters, while GPT-4 has 1.2 trillion parameters. However, the number of parameters is not the only factor that determines the model's performance and capabilities. So the disclaimer statement is definitely true. But what's really funny is that nobody published how many parameters does GPT-4 have or Gemini. And it gives you references. And if you don't bother to check references, you'll be like, yeah, cool, that's the answer. But if you click on the references, the reference one is the OpenAI website about GPT-4. And if you look for here, if we search for trillion, nothing. And then the other reference is number three, which is this Tech Republic article, which uh, talks about GPT-4. Again, you search for trillion, no, no uh, mention of trillion. So it, it gave you incorrect information. I mean, maybe these are the right sizes, but I highly doubt it. And these are not published by any anyone. And it gives you references that clearly don't stay this information. So you still have to be really careful about hallucinations uh, with GPT-4 and most likely with uh, Gemini Pro. This is really worrisome for me as a scientist because whenever I use these large language models to uh, ask scientific questions, it uh, can give you some facts and you might be tend to believe them. So that's why I always ask for references, but then I manually have to go to the references and to check if uh, what it said in the statement is correct. And in this case, it's clearly not correct. Uh, I'm aware that nobody published the number of parameters, so that's easy to answer. But when I'm trying to research some new topic about something that I'm not as familiar with, it can get pretty, uh, pretty sketchy. So be careful about that.